Hey guys, it's Cody with Double C Custom Leather. One of the things I struggled with the most when I first started leather work was getting the pattern correct. Um, I do a lot of holsters. Um, that's my main gig as far as the leather work goes. So um, I'm going to do a little tutorial on the Glock 17. We're going to do an outside the waistband holster uh, pattern for it. Um, I'm going to show you how to get it right the first time. That way you don't have to make changes once you've started all your cutting and all your leather um, when everything's cut out it's a lot harder to make changes and make stuff fit um, if you get it if you get your pattern right your holster will be right and you will be you'll save yourself a lot of heartache so I'm gonna get this tripod turned around um, and we'll get started on it all right guys we're ready to get started um, first things first um, some of the things you're gonna need are a good ruler um, I use the metal ones they don't tear up as bad as the plastic ones when you're cutting right next to them uh, they come in really really handy for any kind of leather work um, you're going to want a good pencil uh, make sure it's sharp mine stay dull so um, i'm going to be using a dull one um, you also going to want a pen um, i like to use a pen for marks that i know aren't going to move um, makes things a whole lot easier when you start erasing a bunch of stuff and you don't end up erasing lines that you have already put in um, the last thing you want to want is some way to cut out your pattern and a hole punch um, I'm going to use just your standard drive punch here. Um, I'm not sure of the measurement. It's the same one I use for all my belt loops on all my holsters. Um, and then I use just your cheap razor blade. Um, I find that they work best. Um, I use the folding style. Uh, you can use scissors. You can use a head knife. You can use your kitchen knife. Whatever works for you to cut it out, just make sure it's sharp. Um, so I'm going to get all this stuff out of the way and we'll get started. All right, first thing you want to do is make sure if you are using a, a real firearm to safety check it. Um, that's how accidents happen. There's a lot of different times in this video that you're going to be pointing the gun at yourself. You want to make sure it's safe. Make sure there's no bullet in the chamber. Make sure the safety is on, all that good stuff. Um, I'm using a blue gun today, so we don't have to worry about that. Uh, I said before it's a Glock 17, um, and we're going to be making a pancake style outside the waistband holster for it. Okay, so the first thing you want to do is trace the gun. Um, I've already done that, and just to save a little bit of time on the video, and once you get the gun traced, um, just a couple things to point out is you're really going to want to stay tight right here around the top of the slide. Um, that part and this part here near the rail system, okay, and around the trigger guard. Um, stay pretty true to your actual dimensions of the gun there. Um, that's going to help you get more accurate stitch lines and when you, you're not going to have any surprises when you go to put the holster together. Um, I've kind of got off before and it had to be really sloppy loose and or just way too tight. Um, if you stay true to your dimensions, I'm going to show you the way to get a perfect stitch line um, and it's going to be a great fit. Okay, So like I said, I've already traced the gun. Um, when you go to lift the gun up after tracing it, make note of where the mag release button is. Um, you're going to want to stay away from that. So what we're going to do is when we lift it up and move it to the side, we're going to make an X. Okay, that X is going to keep us away and we're not going to get leather anywhere near that X, okay? Because you don't want the gun to go in the holster and the leather to press on the mag release and the mag fall out. That's never a good thing. That's a sign of a really crappy holster. So we're going to try our best to stay away from it and make all of our lines go around it in the most efficient way possible, okay? The next thing you're going to do is, let's move this out of the way for the time being. Um, I like to take the top of my sight posts back and front. If they're, if they're different sizes and you, and you kind of get a skewed line this way, um, make sure you just kind of parallel. So really and truthfully, the only thing we're looking to do here is just kind of make a starting line here because we're going to put a wooden dowel inside our holster to mold a sight channel in so the sights don't drag when we when we draw so we're going to give ourselves that much room for that dowel okay um, it usually lays pretty level with the sights so from there that's the line we're going to go off of okay we're not going to go off that line on the top of the slide um, we're going to measure the width at the top of the slide of the of the firearm itself. Um, I have one inch here, uh, give or take a few 
sixteenths, but it's pretty dead on really when you look at it. Um, we got about one inch there, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take half of one inch. Half of one inch is half an inch. So we are gonna offset our marks from that line that we just scribed a half inch, okay? And the reason we're going a half inch and not a full inch is because we're gonna be making a pancake style holster. So this stitch line that we're scribing now is gonna be two part two pieces of leather coming together to make the width of that gun, which is an inch. So if we give ourselves an inch, we'll have two inches and we'll have a super sloppy, loose holster. The stitch lines aren't gonna really, really be doing you much good there as far as keeping the gun retained, okay? So um, once we make our two tick marks, we'll go ahead and scribe that line. You can make that line as dark as you want. It's not gonna change. Um, that is going to be your stitch line for the top of the gun, okay? The next thing I usually like to do is go ahead and down here by the barrel, just even and flush with it, go ahead and make a mark there as well. Okay, that's gonna be the bottom of our holster. Um, let me adjust this so you guys can see. That's gonna be the bottom of our holster. And you guys have to please excuse me, I'm working around a tripod here, so um, I may get a little bit out of whack and I'll try to get back in the, in the frame as quickly and uh, efficiently as possible if I do get out. So um, that's the bottom line of your holster, okay? You want it to be about flush. Um, now, if you want some barrel sticking out, you can go you can go a little higher. If you want to make sure you have all that gun covered and you want to put a stitch line down there um, to make it more of a sealed off holster, um, you can do that. Give yourself a little bit of extra room, okay? Um, this is going to be an open-ended outside the waistband holster, so uh, we're going to go flush. All right, the next thing you want to do is get a measurement on the bottom part of the pistol which just so happens because glocks are so bulky and square happens to be one inch okay uh, so we're gonna go a half inch this is gonna be our stitch line for down here by the rail system so we're gonna put in our two tick marks and make a line there okay and if this is kind of wonky because your pencil kind of bumped across the rail you can square that up Okay, got half an inch there. We'll go up and make another mark here at half an inch. And that'll allow us to put in our line. Okay, these are pretty straight. So you'll have some guns that kind of come in this way. Um, 1911s will do that. Uh, the M&P uh, Smith & Wesson has kind of a little indention there. Um, you can go straight and it's not gonna hurt anything. However, it makes your holster look super sharp and it looks like you really know what you're doing if you knock that stitch line in and make the indention in that stitch line so um let's go ahead and scribe that line between those two points okay and guys if you're worried about getting off square at all you can use a square um, i'm pretty good at staying square so i didn't stay square there though whoops tooting my own horn here um i'm pretty good at staying square so i've done a lot of these so um, I usually don't use a square, but um, if it makes you feel more comfortable, by all means, use the square. Um, and then, so what we're going to do is we're going to need to make our line for our uh, trigger guard stitch line. Um, this is where your stitch line is going to curve around to the top of your trigger guard. Um, Glocks have a pretty straight trigger guard on the bottom. Um, you will have some trigger guards that look more this way here. No, let me see if I'm on frame here. Um, they'll be curved. You want to make sure once you get to the widest point, you stay wide. Um, you'll see what I'm talking about here in a second. Um, you stay wide because if you pull your stitch line in here, once you go past that widest point, when you go to put the reholster the weapon, it's not going to want to pass that stitch line and it's going to cause you problems. Okay. So, um, like I said, I'm going to show you guys how to do it right the first time, and hopefully, this will clear up a lot of things for a lot of people. Now we're going to need a measurement on our on our trigger guard, which I believe just from doing this prior is about, let's see, call that seven eighths, I'm sorry, not seven eighths, five eighths, um, and you're going to want to go half of that. So half of that would be...
be about five sixteenths. Okay. So, sorry guys, I'm not really good at math either. So we're gonna go in at our trigger guard and make a mark here. Okay. And now you're gonna continue that mark all the way around the trigger guard. Um, and Glocks have kind of this little point that comes out here. So um, it's gonna look really sharp when you actually follow that same measurement on around and kind of give a little bump in your stitch line there. Okay, now I'm gonna just go ahead and draw this. Um, you should have a series of dots here to follow if you measure all the way around. Um, I've done this so many times. This is a lot faster for me and this is gonna cut down on our video time here. So here's what I'm talking about guys. When you come up the bottom side of the trigger guard if this flares back in the trigger guard flares back in like let's say on a 1911 see how we got this flare here we're not going to follow this i'm sorry that's a that's a that's a bad example let me find you a good example On a revolver so see how it's your wide point is here if we flare in here when we go to reholster that weapon and your stitch lines here it's gonna be coming straight across here so you're gonna run into that stitch line with the front of the trigger guard um, that's not gonna be a good thing and you guys definitely definitely want to stay away from that always remember once you get wide and you get to the widest point stay wide and just bring your stitch line straight up from there so this stitch line is going to come up okay and it's going to stop right around here now we want to leave this space in here is very important um, when i first started making holsters i had a huge problem with running that stitch line all the way up to the gun and uh I noticed that once I was trying my holsters out, I couldn't fit my fingers in between the leather and the gun. Um, I have really fat, stubby fingers, so if you leave yourself enough space there, you're gonna you're gonna allow for a lot more comfortability and a good purchase when somebody goes to grab that firearm and and, and unholster it, as well as reholstering it. Um, so make sure you leave yourself enough space there. So now we got our stitch line set. It's time to start drawing our wings of our pancake. Okay. Um, this this holster is going to be have a lot of curves um, and we're just going to kind of play around with the lines kind of scribe some lines in there and make sure but before we do that we're going to mark where our belt loops are going to go I usually make my belt loops two inches you can make them bigger or smaller um, but here's my recommendation if you are if you have a belt that's an inch and three quarters and you know it's your holster or you or the guy said I'm specifically want this holster for this belt um, the belt's this wide you can go ahead and make that so that way you don't have any wasted space in your uh, in your belt loop two inches I found fits most belts if you have a wider belt than two inches um, I'm sorry I wouldn't want to wear a wider belt than two inches um, most belts are inch and three quarter inch and a half or two inches Two inches is a safe play. Um, if you go down to an inch and a half, um, if somebody wears an inch and three quarter belt, it's not gonna fit and it's gonna look like crap if they do get it fit because this belt's gonna be all bunched up and it's gonna it's gonna ruin the holster as well. So um, just try to be liberal with your belt loop, but don't be too liberal. Um, and then we're gonna scribe a line up here. This is gonna give us our cant, okay? Um, your belt loop at the top of your slide should always be higher if this is if this is a right-handed holster um, or or left-handed holster for that matter um, you want your belt loop to be higher okay and this is going to be a right-handed holster guys um, I don't do many left-handed holsters I don't know why I just don't but when I do do them I usually have to remake them because I screw up and I, I cut something out for right-handed because I'm so used to doing right-handed um, so I'm gonna give this a slight can't um, about 15 degrees maybe 20 maybe a little bit shy I don't get a protractor out and measure it I just do it by eye um, and what I do is I usually look at the line perpendicular to myself and then that cant that's on the gun is gonna be the same cant when the belt goes across if you imagine this ruler as the belt that's gonna be your cant okay just slight 
just slightly aggressive. Um, if you want to make it a little bit more, by all means, you can do so. Okay, so I'm gonna put my other belt loop in here. Okay, and I'll show you guys what to do with these in a little bit. So we got our two belt loops in, we got the cant we want. Now we can start drawing our holster shape. And this is the fun part. This is where you can kind of get crazy, get creative. Um, I'm, I just, I kind of go back and forth with my pencil like this and scribe the lines. Um, you don't want to get too close to your belt loop because remember you're going to have a stitch line set in here. Um, so you don't want to be extremely, extremely close. Give yourself enough room to put some pretty stitches in, okay? I just kind of move my pencil back and forth. If you're better artists than me then by all means just draw one straight line I kind of have to play with the shape a little bit before I get exactly what I want and this technique allows me to do that so once again this is where your dead space is where your hands gonna go when you grab the firearm stay clear of that and then remember we're also staying clear of this mag release button so I'm going to come up with this kind of shape here. That's not quite the line I want. I'll give it a little bit of curve. Um, you can make these things as straight as you want and as curvy as you want. Um, it's all just kind of what your eye likes and, and what you think looks appealing. Um, this general shape right here can vary in so many different ways. Now, I'm not going to do a sweat guard on this, but if you were doing a sweat guard, you could come up with the leather. Now, that's going to require you cut out two, two different templates. Okay, you can come up with a sweat guard here like that. Um, and I'll kind of just show you what that would look like, just real rough and quick. Um, it looks something like this, okay. Um, on the back piece of leather. This is the front side we're drawing now. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of that line because we're not doing a sweat guard on this on this particular holster. We're just gonna come straight across here. I think that looks visually the best. Kind of adjust that line. We're kind of kind of slanted there. I don't erase much. Um, you can erase as much as you want. Um, me personally, I find it just slows me down. So I typically, I typically don't erase much. Once I play with a line enough, I kind of know where it's at. And once you get past this stitch line, you can start coming down. Now, see, I don't like the shape of that, so I'm gonna come and put a little bit more of a curve in it. Sometimes I will erase just to kind of keep my eyes from playing tricks on me. And then once you come down with this wing, once again, leave yourself plenty of space here for your stitch. I'm kind of... leaning more towards a line like that but now that I look at it guys and this is why it's so important to get this right um, if I was to cut this out on the leather um, and I noticed that I didn't like the way something looked I'd have to start over from scratch um, and then I'm wasting all that leather so I'm kind of seeing here that this needs to be out a little bit so what I'm gonna do is move my my belt loop over some that's gonna allow me to get the shape that I want here as well as at the bottom it just wasn't looking right if it doesn't look like right it's probably not gonna look right once you cut it out so go ahead and change it now it's gonna save yourself a lot of heartache and a lot of time and 
once again guys you're just playing with shapes here seeing what looks right what makes you happy um, I'm pretty happy with that shape right here I might tweak it a little bit um, soften some of these curves up um, the softer you make your curves better it's going to look when you cut the leather out. It's going to be easier to cut out for one. For two, um, when you burnish all your edges, it's going to make them that much easier to burnish. It's really hard to burnish a 90 degree angle. Um, it just never seems to come out right. So, and may maybe it's me. Maybe I, maybe I don't know how to burnish, but um, I take pride in my edges and I always kind of have my edges in the back of my mind whenever I'm doing a holster design. Um, so that's pretty much what we got so far guys um, we're gonna go ahead and make that our make that our design um, I hope you guys can see it and uh, we stayed clear of our mag pouch okay um, and our belt loops we have the right can now, this is where I use my pen because I don't want this getting erased I'm gonna put a big R with a circle um, to me, that means right-handed. Um, you can write right-handed, you can put an R, you can put whatever you need to, RT. That, for me, works because I was in the medical field. Um, R with a circle means right um, on any kind of med medical document. So that, that works for me. So I'm gonna big, put a big R. Um, this is also going to be the back piece, okay? Um, if I imagine this holster going to my side right now, on the right side this is going to be the back piece so I'm gonna know when I do trace this onto the leather that this side needs to be down to do the front side and then I'm gonna flip it over for the other side um, you're gonna screw that up several times if you're just starting out um, I still screw it up and I do this every day so um, just kind of just kind of help yourself out make some notes leave yourself a little bit of notes um, that way kind of jog your memory when you go to start cutting leather okay so I'm gonna put back and I want to underline that and then I'm gonna put G17 for me that means Glock 17 so that way I know once I get done cutting this on leather and I throw this in the bin with the rest of my um, templates I'm gonna know I can go right back to that if I need to do another Glock 17 holster okay so the next step is to grab that drift punch we talked about and go ahead and put our circles in for our belt loops this is going to really help you out when you go to cut leather out and i'll do another tutorial on how to cut belt loops the way i do it i don't have a fancy bag punch or anything like that so cutting them out for me means putting two holes and then connecting connecting the dots here okay so i just line that up in the center knock our hole in it knock another hole in it all right and the very last thing we do before we cut it out is get yourself one of these this is a scratch all um, you can use a sharp screwdriver you can use a pick you can use um, anything sharp you can use the tip of your pocket knife if you don't have one of these but they do I use this tool more than anything else on the workbench sometimes uh, it comes in handy and what I do is I just follow my line on straight lines, I usually put two to three dots, um, just so kind of keeps the integrity of my template here. Um, and I just poke straight through the line. Um, now, when we flip it over, which I have another drawing on the back, but um, when we flip it over, we'll have that dot. Okay, so when we go to start marking our leather and we're tracing this out, we can just re tap these same holes with our awl. It's going to put a little tiny impression in the leather. And that's going to let you know where the stitch lines are, okay? So I go all the way around. I'm going to try to do this left-handed so you guys can see. I go all the way around on my curves. And it's kind of just connect the dots from that point on. And then on this big, long stitch line, I'll do three. Okay. And once again, that's just to mark your stitch lines once you go on the leather. And it's going to be, it's going to really help you follow 
a straight line once you put your stitch grooves in and stuff like that. Um, I know I'm still new to this YouTube thing, guys. I haven't put that many videos up, but I do plan to put up videos um, how to make these belt loops, how to how to draw your stitch grooves, how to trace this and cut this out. Um, I also really want to do like a full build along, um, start to finish on a holster. Um, and so once we cut this out, we'll have two sides of our holster to pancake together. Okay, and it'll look something like this. Now this is for a Glock 19, but you see, got my stitch lines in there. Those are the lines that I marked. You can see that you don't have any kind of mark in there after that. Um, that that's going to be a holster here soon. Uh, I just got to stitch it up and do the wet molding and do the edges and all that good stuff. So, um, but here's the gun pocket. Okay. Um, and then when it gets all said and done and finished, let me grab you guys a uh, good example here. Here is one for a VP9. Okay. So you see, and if we take that particular blue gun and shove it in there, see what I was talking about with that dead space here? Okay. That is what we need. We need plenty of room to grab. Beautiful holster. Okay, and uh, so all you got to do now, guys, is cut that out. Just try to stay as, as clean to your lines as possible. Um, you can trace it onto the leather after that. And uh, go ahead and mark your mark your stitch holes, and you're on all your All right, way. guys. Well, that pretty well does it for the how to make a holster template video. I've gone ahead and cut mine out. I'm going to get started on cutting some leather, get the holster started. Um, I hope this helps some people. Uh, I had a really, really tough time with getting the templates right when I first started all the work. There was a lot of videos online. Um, some people explained it well, some didn't. And I feel like I took all of everything and tried to put it together in one and still didn't get it right. So I hope it does help. Um, if you're having trouble with anything else, uh, feel free to leave me a comment in the section below and I'll try to get back to it as soon as possible. Um, and if uh, you guys want to see any videos, just let me know. Shoot me a comment. Um, hit me up on social media. I'll put the links to my Instagram and Facebook in the description. Um, and if you guys want to see anything, just let me know, and I will do my best to make a video on it. Um, make sure you like. Make sure you subscribe. That helps me keep making videos. So uh, you guys have a good night.